I'm Thanks Too Much, and welcome to this video. Today is the first edition of what I'm calling Second Chance, where I take an underrated, underappreciated, or a game that I think flew under the radar and give it the attention that I believe it deserves. Today we're talking about Dark Watch, a unique western that makes it horror and a little steampunk to make a title that I believe is really unique. Let's take a closer look. The western genre has had its ups and downs in video games ever since the medium was created. Great old school games such as Sunset Riders for the arcade and SNES have extremely fun 2D gameplay that took place in a colorful western setting, while Custer's Revenge is a game so deplorable that the less said about it, the better. This up and down cycle of quality in western games would continue as developers entered and improved 3D technology. Games like Red Dead Revolver and Gun were decent enough games, but nothing to write home about. Of course, now we have the legendary Red Dead Redemption, which is considered to be the pinnacle of Western video games, and with good reason. Red Dead Redemption has enjoyable gameplay, an authentic Western setting, and a great story with a very impactful ending that even drove a few people to tears. Other games such as Call of Juarez Gunslinger also prove that Western games can make fun of the Western genre and not take themselves too seriously, but still be great gaming experiences. So with many Western style games to choose from, it's no surprise that a few great games of this subgenre would fly under the radar. Dark Watch is one of those games. During the time of the original Xbox and PlayStation 2, Dark Watch was a rare type of game that successfully combined various genres together to make a unique gaming experience. Not only taking inspiration from the Western genre, but also from horror and a little bit of steampunk to create a game that hasn't really been matched in terms of setting and style. Various gameplay mechanics were also combined to make what I call a modernized run and gun shooter, if that makes any sense. It's obvious that Dark Watch took a lot of gameplay inspiration from modern shooters of its time, like the original Call of Duty and Halo Combat Evolved, but it successfully combined them with old school gaming mechanics from titles like Doom and Quake. Dark Watch came out in 2005, during a time when first person shooters were transitioning to more strategic and or realistic based mechanics. Because of this, Dark Watch found itself in a limbo state between two forms of first person shooting that surprisingly resulted in a unique and enjoyable title. The story is as simple as it can get for a western game that mixes other genres together. The introductory cutscene before the game begins introduces the Dark Watch with a voice actor who is obviously doing his best Sam Elliott impression. Apparently the Dark Watch are a super secret society that has been battling the undead, vampires, and other supernatural beings for centuries. You play as Jericho Cross, the silent protagonist, outlaw cowboy, and classic western hero who walks alone and does everything by himself. Jericho Cross is out for one last train robbery in the wild wild west territory of Arizona that will make him a rich man. However, as you progress through the train, you realize that things are really strange to say the least and you're soon confronted by a Dark Watch agent named Cassidy Sharp. But before she can stop your train robbery, you blow up a vault and claim your riches only to realize that instead of money or gold, the vault was actually a prison for a vampire lord called Lazarus. He then bites you and turns you into a half-breed vampire as a twisted way of thanking you for freeing him. So now your actions have freed a vampire lord and it's up to Jericho and Cassidy Sharp to make it to the Dark Watch outpost to regroup with other agents, return Lazarus to his prison, and hopefully save your soul from Lazarus's curse along the way. Unfortunately for Cassidy, she gets killed and turns into a ghost that tries to lead Jericho into the path of good if you decide to follow that path. From here on out, you eventually join the Dark Watch itself and start your adventure of battling undead armies, lots of bullets, basic moral choices, and plot twists you can see coming a mile away. Dark Watch keeps it simple, and while the simplicity of a game's structure can sometimes be a negative, here it works perfectly. It's the main reason why the combination of western, horror, and steampunk genres work so well. When combining more than one genre together, in any media, things can get really convoluted and unnecessarily confusing if creators aren't careful on how they are going to blend their chosen genres. Dark Watch cleverly bypasses any complication by keeping things simple in setting, story, and gameplay. The western elements are evident right away in the game's setting and landscapes. You see the classic deserts, trains, small wooden towns, military forts, and even western accents from non-playable characters. 
It's obvious that the game takes much of its Western inspiration from the so-called Spaghetti Western films, especially those directed by Sergio Leone, which starred Clint Eastwood. This inspiration is obvious when you first enter the main menu, and the theme song for Sergio Leone's classic film, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, starts playing, albeit at a slower pace with an appropriate horror touch. In fact, even the original music in Dark Watch seems to mimic the style of music that Ennio Morricone composed for Sergio Leone's classic Dollars trilogy of films, which makes the western feel pop out even more if you're familiar with these films. Dark Watch is also clever in making fun of some classic western tropes that haven't aged well since the John Wayne days. I mean, you battle zombie cowboys and zombie Native Americans for God's sakes, and while the latter could have been easily taken the wrong way, here it fits perfectly because everything is so over the top. The horror in this game isn't meant to be scary, it's meant to be fun. It's almost as if the game is winking at the player by making fun of the illogical premises of most early western films, specifically those released around the 40s and 50s, by literally one-upping the ridiculous factor with its horror. The horror elements also come in setting and in story. You play the game almost always at night, and the game occasionally ditches the western environments for something a little bit more creepier, such as caverns and cemeteries. But even though western environments have a nice horror feeling attached to them, especially the small wooden towns that are devoid of any color and everything seems to be covered in ash, giving them a very ominous presence. The story itself is basically B-movie horror. It feels like if you are playing through one of the many classic horror films from the 80s that it was somehow set in a western. Vampire lords, undead armies, and lots of killing make for a simple horror story, but combine that with the western setting and you have something really unique, or at least really damn enjoyable. All of these horror and western themes are sprinkled on with a little steampunk, which is more visual than anything else, but it goes a long way to make Dark Watch a unique title. The guns you pick up do nothing special, mechanically speaking. You have your standard pistols, shotguns, and even rocket launchers that function the same way you've seen in many other games before. But the way these guns look is an intriguing mixture of steampunk and western styles, and even if the weapons don't do anything special, they at least feel different from other games thanks to their physical design. Besides the weapons, there are also a few vehicles you can pilot that also have a nice steampunk feel to them. You'll have a few levels in which you will battle inside moving trains, and both the outside and interior design of these trains has a genuine steampunk feel to them. The industrial design of something futuristic and old at the same time makes these trains levels really stand out. You'll also be able to drive a vehicle called the Coyote, and even though it controls a lot like the Warthog from the Halo series, its physical design gives it a nice steampunk look, which again makes it feel different even if it's not. But genres aren't the only thing that Dark Watch takes inspiration from, as gameplay mechanics are also inspired by other games. When the game was released in 2005, the Halo franchise was on fire to say the least. The first Halo in 2001 was the Xbox's killer app, and the sequel in 2004 revolutionized the way people played on Xbox Live. Dark Watch took some notes from the Halo franchise, while at the same time mixing its shooting with a more old school style. The Halo inspiration comes from how the horror and steampunk elements emulate what the Halo franchise was doing at the time. As mentioned before, in a few instances, you'll drive a vehicle called the Coyote that handles almost exactly like the Warhawk does in Halo. The two big differences are being that you can shoot the vehicle's Gatling guns while driving, and the Coyote itself has a nice steampunk slash horror look to it. It's disappointing that the Coyote is used only in one level, at least on the Xbox version that I played, but quality is better than quantity, and the coyote sections are fun while they last. When your character Jericho Cross is bit and turned into a half-vampire breed, you acquire something called a blood shield, which works exactly the same way the shield and health system work in the original Halo. Your blood shield protects your main health, and once it's depleted, you better find some cover or you'll die if you keep taking damage. If Dark Watch stopped there, it would be easy to call this aspect a ripoff from Halo, but for everything this title borrows, it gives something back. The Blood Shield is cleverly used to drive home the fact that your game character is a half-vampire breed, and because of this, sunlight won't do you any favors and some missions require you to fight in the middle of daylight. But rather than killing you upright, the sun simply depletes your Blood Shield, and renders your other vampire powers useless. 
Now all of a sudden you play more cautiously and using cover offense since you don't have the shield to protect yourself from enemy fire, similar to the way you'd play in Halo. Your vampire powers such as your double jump and the vampire abilities granted to you depending on moral choices you make throughout the game are also gone until you find some sort of shadow from the sun. You can also play a lot more cautiously if you decide to tackle the harder difficulties. But these areas in which you are forced to fight in sunlight are few and far between and for 90% of the game you'll fight during the night where your vampire powers will be in full force. This is where Dark Watch plays a lot more like an old school shooter and it's better for it. When this game was released in 2005, the first person shooter genre in general was more focused on stronger stories and gameplay mechanics with more focus towards realism rather than just a run and gun style shooter. Online play was also gaining steam, though it wouldn't pick up full force until the next generation of gaming. If Dark Watch were released today, it would have done a lot better, because games like Wolfenstein The New Order and Doom 2016 have proven that there is a resurgence for old school first person shooter style of gameplay. Whether it be for nostalgia or because the simplicity of gameplay is now an attraction to people who have become a little wary of how complex first person shooters, and really just games in general, have become, Today, old-school shooters and modern graphics go together like a cold beer on a hot summer day. But in 2005, Dark Watch was still unfortunately released to a gaming market that wanted more complexity since games like Doom and Quake weren't too far off. Time-wise, anyway. People wanted something different, and simplicity was seen as a negative back then because after games like Halo, people wanted to see more meaning in every aspect of their first-person shooters. But Dark Watch had a vision and it definitely had style. For better or for worse, the game is a lot more Doom than it is Halo, and if that didn't entice players to play it over a decade ago, it will certainly please those today that are looking for a callback to how first-person shooters used to play, which emphasized shooting and fun over everything else. But simplicity can also show a game's age, and while games today offer a deeper look into the complexity of morality, with titles like Mass Effect and Telltale Games The Walking Dead, Dark Watch doesn't really care about the gray area of morality. You play as a half-breed vampire, and as such you have control over what good or evil choices you will commit in certain areas of the game. These choices usually consist of innocent non-playable characters that have fallen victim to Lazarus's curse. Now and then you'll be presented with a moral situation to do the good or evil thing. Nothing in between. Gameplay wise, your choices decide what type of powers you'll get. Story wise, your choices decide the final boss and ending of the game, and that's pretty much it. The morality system is more tied to gameplay mechanics than it is to storytelling. A good or bad playthrough will grant you different vampire powers, and most people who play will most likely be enticed to play the game twice to see how an evil playthrough differs from a good playthrough. While there is enough difference to grant a second playthrough, you will soon realize just how much more complex morality systems have gotten since Dark Watch released in 2005. That's not to say that it's a bad thing, and I'd go as far as to say that it's endearing to see how early morality systems worked in games before they were taken seriously by game developers as a way to improve gameplay and storytelling. But don't expect more than a few gameplay options and a different ending cutscene with the moral choices you make in Dark Watch. Now, it's obvious that Dark Watch didn't make a huge splash when it came out, even though it is a quality game, but that doesn't mean it was immune to some controversy. The violence and grim nature of the game was no longer as controversial as it once was. Even back in 2005, the blood and gore was just part for the course. But the game did, however, take some heat for its portrayal of female characters, mainly the main antagonist known as Tala. When it comes to physical appearance, Dark Watch doesn't do itself any favors in objectifying women. You really only have Cassidy Sharp and Tala as female characters in this game, and they both wear skin-tight black spandex-like uniform that leaves little to the imagination. I mean, hell, Tala even shows major cleavage when she wears her uniform. Nowadays, female appearances like these are huge eye-rollers, and even the most immature of players will look at these characters and say, Ugh, really? You're trying too hard. But in 2005, it was still commonplace and even encouraged to have badass lady characters, they just had to look sexy while on screen. Some people even pointed out the fact that Tala is Native American, which in this case can send the wrong message about the exotic image of women of color. And yet, here we come to a dilemma. While some people see the sexualization of the female characters in Dark Watch as a problem, others have actually defended it, at least in the case of Dark Watch. In fact, 
Some think it's even empowering. The argument is made that Tala knows she's sexy. She knows she's desirable and is smart enough to use this against the player character as she tricks Jericho into biting her during a moment of passion, turning her into a powerful vampire. The argument goes, if Tala has the stuff to get what she wants, then why not use it? It shows that she's cunning and willing to do whatever it takes to achieve her agenda. Tala makes her own choices, and those choices involve her sexiness and sexuality. So what's wrong with that? Now I must admit, that's actually a reasonable point and maybe it would be easier to overlook this issue if the physical portrayal of the women in Dark Watch wasn't so overly sexualized. Again, skin tight leather bodysuits and cleavage. Come on, these ladies are fighting the undead, not going to a strip club. But it was 2005, so you know, you gotta keep that in mind. In the end though, while this subject is worth bringing up, it's not worth discrediting what is otherwise a great and overlooked shooter. If you see Dark Watch on a retro store, make sure you give it a try. Sure, some aspects might be dated, but for the most part it still holds up really well and its mixture of western, horror, and steampunk genres make it a unique game in both style and creativity, even to this day. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing for more videos and if you want to see more, feel free to look at some of my previous work. I hope to see you all real soon.